Hi, uh, welcome to my channel, Astro Journey UK. Um, so today I um, I received a package from uh, First Light Optics, which is uh, which is good. So uh, here it is. Um, one thing I love about this is the fact it sort of says uh, may contain clouds. Um, today it definitely does, um, but never mind. Hopefully it's meant to clear up later on, so I might be able to get this uh, get this on the telescope and. Uh, Hopefully it will improve my uh, guiding. Um, so what I bought is a um, QHY uh, Pole Master Electronic Poloscope. Um, so yeah, from uh, First Light Optics, it comes pretty well packaged, which is really good. Um, and it came with a couple of different things. So I've got the uh, Pole Master scope itself and an adapter for my mount. So we just take a, a quick look at what's in there um, so this this bit of bubble wrap is not really the very exciting part to be fair um, literally in here is is going to be the, um, the mount adapters themselves um, everything seems to come wrapped in a ridiculous amount of plastic um, so yeah nice nice bit of anodized um, aluminium um, yeah Look good, looks good. So in the box itself, um, kind of got a nice card that says, open box and find your treasure. Um, and in here is under some foam. Um, we've got the polar scope itself. Um, not really much to it other than camera in one end and a mini USB connector um, on the side and the uh, the good thing with this this connector and um, the mini USB connector is actually they've got some um, you can kind of see them there got some uh, sort of screw fixings to this so you basically plug it in and then you can actually screw it into the poloscope itself which is quite neat um, saves these things kind of falling out um, and probably a good length of cable, probably about a metre's worth of the cable there, which is good. So uh, bringing the camera a bit closer so you can see. Um, so you've got the polar scope itself, um, nicely solidly built as well, which is good. Um, in here, in another piece of uh, another little bag, and we've got um, three, three little bolts, tiny Allen key, and it's a little plug thing, which I think is designed to go on the uh, over the front of the lens. Um, so, in true fashion, one there are no instructions, but I'm not going to end up reading them anyway. Um, so this thing kind of unscrews, and then this comes out. But it looks like fundamentally, what you need to do is screw this bracket into um, into the camera all right so I've now got a screwdriver um, let's put these in here and I've now I realized the completely foolish error of my ways here this is where it would be good to read the manual it obviously goes in the other way around. So thread the bolt through there. That does make more sense because it's actually threaded in the uh, in the anodized side. <laughs> so that would have that was kind of the giveaway. Uh, so screw that in. Just nipping it at this point in time, just so that you can realign the uh, each of the screws and tightening them up a little bit more so there's definitely no uh, play in them so you kind of go around each each side so that you're making it nice and even so that's kind of that done um, and then basically what, what looks like, and I'll go um, 
what this looks like. If I go on to the, uh, the mount in a little bit, is you kind of screw this into um, the telescope mount itself, whether you have the polar scope or the existing polar scope. Um, this stays in the mount and then you basically clip this in, tighten that screw up and then, uh, then it's good to go. So uh, I confess I've just looked at the uh, the manual. Um, so one thing that was kind of bugging me was was this this piece here. I was like, I'm sure this is meant to go in here, but I'm not quite sure why. Um, and this is basically the, uh, the the lens cap holder. So if you kind of unscrew the um, the lens cap, you see the the uh, camera lens there. Um, and then yeah, you've just got a, a nice. Um, holder for the lens cap so you don't lose it which is almost guaranteed if they didn't do that because uh, it gets dark obviously and you don't know where you put things. Um, I also found a, uh, an allen key in the uh, in the box um, and it's that allen key that you need to use when sort of fixing this uh, so you've got the, the bolts in the uh, inside the, the mounting bracket and you just use this allen key to uh, fix this into the mount. Um, the other thing that was kind of baffling me a bit was, uh, yep, there was a little, very, very small uh, Allen key uh, that came with the camera as well. Um, and what you do is, or well, the purpose of that is actually to help with focusing. So you take or unscrew the um, the outside of the camera, take that off the camera, um, and then you've got uh, the the insides of the uh, polar scope itself. And if you kind of look. Um, around about there um, you can see that there's um, a tiny tiny little allen bolt uh, basically you unscrew that slightly and then you're then able to um, change the focus of the camera uh, once you're happy with the focus then you then tighten that bolt back up again um, you shouldn't really have to touch it after that um, and then you can then place this uh, cover back over the camera um, and then it's it's ready to go. Um, when you're not using it, you kind of take the scope off. Put this nice little uh, cap on there. Screw that on, and it stays in place. So uh, yeah, really nicely designed. Um, couldn't really expect for much more. Um, so what we're going to do is. Um, yeah, get this on the telescope and then have a look tonight. Hopefully it's going to be clear and um, see how the software works. Okay, so what we're going to do now is um, fit, the, uh, fit the bracket. So take off the dust cover. Um, this should, uh, I'd say, just fit in here nicely. What I'm going to aim to do is, um, when the camera is connected, apparently you should have the USB cable coming out um, at the 3 o'clock position, um, which then means that the polar alignment is just a lot more uh, intuitive. So let's give that a go. Um, so I've got the, uh, the Allen key and just need to tighten up the bolts in here. Easier said than done. This is a nice way of speeding this up. You can actually thread the Allen key through here to get them so at least they're at least touching. Because otherwise it's gonna take ages. This is really quite fiddly. so that it's slightly snug before I put it in. There we go. And just tighten these up to make sure it's properly secure.
thing, yeah, it's not going anywhere, it's nice and solid. Um, and then for now, should have the cap somewhere. Um, you can see you just place the cap on there, screw it on, and that's what you're going to do when you're not using it. So fitting this is quite easy now. Um, unscrew that, take the cap off, put this over the top and screw it in. Um, and as I said before, this is coming out at three o'clock position. Apparently that is, helps with the polar alignment. Unscrew that. And then you can just place that round there until you finish with it. So what we're going to do now is um, download the drivers and the software for the Pole Master. So if you type into the search engine uh, QHY Pole Master um, and then on the third or so result down you should be able to see the website itself. Um, so yeah this page is just the landing page for the uh, Pole Master electronic poloscope. Uh, just providing some uh, information about the product itself. So if you then click on download, um, this provides all of the downloads for all of their different cameras, um, but we're just interested in the Polemaster one. So you scroll down to that and you'll see system drivers and also um, a software download. Um, so you definitely need the drivers for the camera to work uh, within Windows itself um, and also the other piece of software is actually the polar alignment software that you need as well. So you just wait for those two things to download. So now that they're downloaded let's go into Windows Explorer um, into the downloads folder um, and extract both of these zip files. Uh, sometimes you can load things from the zip file directly but it's always better to uh, extract them completely first. There's extracting the drivers. And we'll install those first. So it should literally be a one click operation in terms of, uh, or maybe not one click, but um, a fairly simple process. Just let it go through all of the default settings. Um, here you've got to um, just validate that you're happy to install software from that particular vendor. Um, just a security feature of Windows. Um, so that's the drivers installed. Um, and now we're actually just installing the uh, Pole Master software here as well. Um, so again, just go through the wizard, default locations, as long as you're happy to install things onto a, a C drive, uh, that's fine. If you've got other drives and you know what you're doing, you can put it wherever you uh, see fit. Um, so it's a Pole Master software, um, there's an icon on the desktop. I find it kind of interesting that it requires you to run this as admin. It seems a bit a bit dubious. I don't really see why any software that that is just controlling a camera uh, needs to do that, but um, that's <laughs> you've got to do that, so therefore you haven't got any choice. Um, and so just tried to hit connect there, but uh, I haven't got the camera connected yet, so we'll do that in a minute. So what we're going to do now is open uh, Pole Master again. Uh, this time we've got the camera connected. Uh, just uh, maximize the window so that we can see um, as much as possible. So click connect um, That's the camera connected now. You can see the uh, uh, Polaris in the middle there and on the left hand side you can just adjust the exposure and gain of the camera so you can um, See the stars more and then you can see the the steps on the left hand side there that you'll run through um, Select north or south pole and then uh, click finish um, so what you need to do now is sort of select the um, select Polaris and then you've got these um, circles that you need to sort of rotate around so it kind of knows where it um, where it is and, and that you definitely clicked on the right star and everything is matching. Um, so once all of that is done you click success. Um, this is just because I was um, doing this earlier on so we're just going to say no to that because we want to uh, do this afresh. 
Um, so what you then need to do is um, select one of the stars, preferably one as far away as possible from uh, Polaris, that you're, you're basically going to try and um, sort of create a circle that is matching the, um, the, the movement of the star through the night sky. So you select it, then you move the, um, the right ascension um, of the mount uh, through 30 degrees at least, and then sort of click the star again and then move it 30 degrees again. And then this enables um, the software to sort of create the rotation arc through the, through the sky. You can see a few sort of satellites sort of uh, going through this part of the sky as well whilst you're doing this. So now that I've done that, um, you then need to sort of select the star again. Um, I, I keep doing this, you basically have to uh, finish the rotation first and then select the star. Um, and then once I've double clicked on that star you should then see the circle appear um, which shows that star's rotation in this view. Um, and then what you need to do now is sort of move the move the mount back to the park position, back to where it is, and you can see that the, um, the star is basically tracking that circle that it's created uh, within this view. Um, so at this point, yep, just double click on uh, Polaris again. Um, and then this is the point which, um, once you've realigned everything, uh, you then get the opportunity to start um, adjusting the mount to, to do the polar alignment. So as it says, using the altitude and azimuth bolts, uh, move Polaris into the center of the small rotating circle. So you can see Polaris, the, the brightest star in the middle of the screen, just have to move it into that particular rotating circle. And once you've done that, um, that's the, the rough polar alignment complete. So you can see the steps on the left hand side here we've done Pole Mars is setting, we've confirmed um, Polaris, we're doing rough pole at the moment. Um, and then once we've completed this adjustment, then we move on to the precise pole alignment. So click finish, and double click on Polaris again. Verify that the stars match, click success. And now we're on to the precise pole alignment, so click on start monitor. Basically you have to get the green square moving the altitude and azimuth bolts again, so that it's exactly um, in that red circle. obviously a little bit fiddly um, but if you remember the trick of um, rotating the connector so it's in the three o'clock position um, that, that makes this process much easier basically the altitude and azimuth bolts are, are moving sort of north south east and west which is really good that's pretty much it and then click finished and you're done as you can see, that's uh, fairly pain-free. There's no sort of stooping down or anything like that to do the polar alignment. Um, you're basically using the, the screen on your laptop to make sure that everything is exactly where it needs to be. Um, an awful lot easier and uh, quicker than the traditional approach. So uh, that's it. Um, thank you for watching this. If you uh, 
If you benefited from this video, then please um, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for future updates. Thank you very much.